we'll start this. Hey everyone, welcome, and I'm super excited to have Rhett Haggett here on the line with me to chat about his life, Braveheart, and what it what it means to be a man. Um, thanks for for spending the time to share yourself with us, Rhett. Thanks for uh, letting me do this, Michael. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. And and Rhett and I met uh, before the last Braveheart retreat, which was some sometime in. April or March of this year, I guess it was. Uh, it was it was March, like the end March. of March. Yep, and uh, and and Rhett's a pretty incredible guy, but uh, I'll, I'll let you introduce yourself and and just share a little bit about you and what you're up to in the world. Sure. Um, so uh, at this point, my name is Rhett Hackett, and I run a nonprofit foundation that focuses on. Um, interpersonal violence and the prevention and education of it um, and it all kind of came to be when I went public with my own personal story on the Oprah Winfrey show um, with a background of sexual abuse and it opened up mega doors of opportunity for me and in seeing the vision that that was a gift I knew that I needed to do something um, with that and wanted to outreach and continue to help other people and help other men that were suffering as a result of, you know, the similar type of, of, of situation as myself. Um, and of course, you know, there's two different worlds that I live in. One is that world in terms of the nonprofit. And then of course, there's the corporate job that I carry that, you know, pays the bills. And in my conversation with Michael and my purpose of connecting with Braveheart was to how do we merge the two of them together so that it's all just one and that it's just 100% in serving of people. So, mm -hmm. um, and that was my, that was my goal to, to come to Braveheart, not as the typical leader that I usually am in the world. Um, and really to kind of gain a better understanding of, of doing that exactly what I just said. But also on top of that too, is that I work and speak with a bunch of other men that are suffering and, and I feel like I can't necessarily you know, translate that information to them to say, okay, you need to work on yourself and you need to attend retreats like Braveheart um, because there's many men that are struggling with who they are and their masculinity as a result of their abuse and their background and because they, they feel that they need to follow the path of that, you know, the stigma that, you you know, that we have made in this country of what really is a man. Yeah. And, and abuse is a, you know, it's it, like people think of certain things as abuse, but, um, in my experience, like every man has experienced abuse in some way, cool. uh, some way, shape, and form. Um, so what, what you're doing is really beautiful, really amazing. Um, but I, I was hoping you could dive into that a little bit more with like your, your own experience or experience of other men and, and just like what what is the toughest problem that you might face as a man? Um, well, I think, you know, and this is, I'm even speaking from my own personal experience, yeah. is that you know, um, going in with the, the model that society has made up of, you know, what is it to be a man, um, to act like a man, to talk like a man, to be like a man, um, it puts a lot of pressure on somebody to fit into that, into that category, into that mold. And if you don't, you, you have this fear of acceptance um, or being, this fear of being rejected more so. Um, and I think that that starts what really creates barriers for people in terms of just kind of overcoming that fear of, you know, am I going to fit in? Am I going to, am I going to be accepted? And, you know, that whole, if I'm not, you know, fall time comes, if I'm not talking about football and swilling down beer, then I'm not a hundred percent of a man. Um, and it really is so much more than that. Um, and I think that we have a responsibility as, you know, my generation being in my 40s, I have a responsibility to the people that are behind me. So the gentlemen that are in their 20s and their 30s to educate them on a little uh, differently that it's not that way so that they can develop without the barriers and the fear that we had at growing up it, it is, as my generation. Mm, nice. And and I'm curious about your experience at the retreat because there was every generation covered from 20 to 70. Which was amazing. Um, Hey, yeah, and so what was your experience as far as like the age, like um, being in this this intimate environment with men older, men younger? Uh, what was that like for you? 
So I have had this conversation and I've talked to a couple of people. Oh, cool. Um, and the best way that I can sum it up is that there is something to learn from every single person. And it is true. It like, And you need to carry that through in your everyday life because um, just because somebody is 30 years older than you or somebody is 20 years younger than you doesn't mean that they don't have value and content to offer to you as a learning process. Um, and so, uh, you know, when I look at somebody like Jeffrey, who was our oldest participant, and mm -hmm. he was also part of my team, I just learned so much from him in regards to just his wisdom and institutional knowledge of life. Um, and at the same time, you know, when I look at somebody, you know, like Jeffrey, um, mm -hmm. who was 22, um, looking through it through his eyes in regards to wanting to change the world and has this passion and this love and, and wants to be able to express it. I think he was looking for validation to say it's okay. And he's looking to those that are older than him to say that that is okay. And, you know, we accept you for who you are. Um, because in his world or his environment, I got the impression that that didn't always happen. And of course it doesn't, um, you know, but that's what part of being, being part of Braveheart is all about. So. Yeah. Well, I, I really resonate with, you know, guys saying like, yes, it's okay. Cause that's, a general uh, experience of the guys there is that everything is okay. Like everything that you bring to the table, uh, whatever you want is great. Yes. And it's not only it's okay, but you'll be okay. Like you will be okay. Nice. And so, so if we dive into you a little bit, a little, little personal details, if you're yeah. open to it, um, what, what was it that you specifically brought and what is, well, we heard what you wanted to get out of it. And what did you get out of it, like for yourself? Um, well, you know, I, what I gained the most, I would say, is a little bit clarity of objectives. Um, and, you know, the, I, and I, I'll give this example. We did the group meditation one day where I think it was 45 minutes, almost to an hour, I think. Um, I mean, that's a, that's a great example right there because I don't even know how much time it really was because time just stopped. Um, and then when we were done, we were sent off to go and, um, you know, journal it out, what we had experienced, what we had felt. And I ended up doing, um, I think it was four and a half pages worth of writing, um, to which I still have that and refer back to the things that I wrote down because I wrote down objectives that were in there. And you know, some of the things I, I didn't even, you know, necessarily think that I was going to go in that direction in just terms of just saying, okay, this is what I need to do. But when you take a moment to pause, and I mean that from an overall standpoint of the trip, um, and then layer in another moment to pause. So now you've separated yourself out of your chaotic world that we all live in. And you're in this beautiful place with these beautiful people. And you take a moment to really kind of pause then that's when you get the clarity that I was looking for in regards mm. to that. Um, and there's also something to be said, and I, it's not something that I, it's not like I didn't know this, but there's something to be said in regards to saying you are not alone. Um, and, and I think that we're all looking, you know, there's not enough conversation between men to say this is what, I feel the same way. It's just that we don't talk about it or, you know, we don't have a lot of people to talk about it with. And, and so to have that in, in one particular space, along with the resources of the people that were the leaders, I, that's like, I don't even know that you can put value to that. Um, so that, that's really what I think I gained the most. Um, nice. it, if I had to sum it up. Nice. And, and a couple of things, times you mentioned, you know, like, uh, relationships with the men, I, and I'm curious about that, about the the community that you left with, like, um, cause it did, did you know anyone going into this? Maybe one, one person, Alan, or did you? Well, I, I, I only knew Alan from the call phone calls leading up to it, but really the only person I knew was you. Okay. Got it. So you didn't really know anyone. Nothing. Um, okay. So <laughs> what, what community have you left with or relationships or friendships or what's that like? Um, so I am still in touch with, um, well, definitely I call it the spirit seven because there were seven of us that stayed at the um, spirit house the night before. Um, 
So I have been in touch with almost every single one of all six of those guys, um, yeah. almost on a regular basis. Um, mm -hmm. And I just got done um, chatting with Jeff last night um, through text. Um, Facebook with Dan this morning. Like I started it last night and wrapped up, you know, this morning with him. Um, Peter and I text. Cameron and I text. Um, so and Alan, you know. Um, so yeah, I mean, definitely. And you know, it can be anything from idle chit chat to just this is what's going on in my life, and just really kind of supporting one another with their initiatives and saying, "Oh my God, great job! Like this is amazing." And um, I, I just, I can't even begin to tell you how great that is. Like it really is. It's amazing. And then let's talk about the people that I, I don't keep up with on a regular basis, but you see um, in regards to the Braveheart Facebook page, I, how many times do you see somebody posting, hey, I'm looking for this resource or I'm looking for that or I need an answer or, you know, where, where do you get that on a regular basis? It, it really just doesn't exist. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. And then... Uh, I have a little insight into, uh, uh, not, and I don't actually know the, the extent of it, but around uh, Braveheart wanting to partner with you in your uh, charity work. Yes. Do you want me to elaborate? or do Yeah, because you, you know more than I do at this point. <laughs> okay. So, um, so Spencer and I had a couple of conversations, um, and then which the one just the other night on Sunday night kind of like sealed the deal of partnership to um, he's really he was really in search of a nonprofit organization that had the focus on preventing abuse for children. And he wants to do good by raising funds and channeling it. And, um, you know, here I am. And, you know, um, we have it. Um, we have what he was looking for in regards to a what we're doing, but b the structure to receive and to support what his initiative is. Um, and when you talk about communities coming together, I don't think that there's a better story. And you know what I had said to him was that you know once we do this and we do it right because we know we will, then we promote the hell out of it and really demonstrate what Braveheart is all about and how, you know, what you guys did and how you're supporting this and how it's going to help and how it's going to trickle down. And, um, that is an amazing story right there. Yeah. It's, it's really beautiful. And, and, you know, I've, I've known Spencer for years now, but, uh, and, and this is the, the beauty of the community and that he, he, uh, had this awareness that he really wanted to be of support of, of children. And that's, that's something I find that's unique to everyone in Braveheart is that they are of service in some way. They are being of service to the world. And, and he, he had wanted to do this for a while and, uh, and then sure enough, like hadn't made the connection to you, yep. right? That, that it was like, <laughs> that this is what you do. And then as soon as that happened, it was just like, Oh great. So now he gets to support you by like, fulfilling some of his dreams and, and you get to build your company and your dreams. Um, and it's really going to, to just become a community thing in general. Absolutely. And, and I have to, I have to put in here um, because it, it's just, it kills me that um, he had gotten sick on, on, <laughs> uh, on the retreat. Appendicitis. And, oh, right. So, and you, you never, like, you didn't tell me anything about his initial. I didn't know anything about him before the retreat and didn't know anything about what he wanted to do until about day three when you finally said, you know, this is one of the things that Spencer was looking to do. And, you know, blah, 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 and, you know and, he, and he said to me, he was like, in one of the conversations, he's like, I really, I was kind of hoping that you would just like be like, listen, I'm the charity that you need to, da, 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 da. And I'm like, that's not my style. My style is I'm going to present with you the best. This is what I have. Like we're doing the best and we're offering it. And you know, if you want to work with me, that's great. And if you want to support me, that's fantastic. Um, and then it just kind of came together at that point. And it was just like this magical moment. So it looks like it's going to be a race in New York. Um, and I told him that, you know, cause we were talking about like getting people signed up and admin. I was like, I was like, I have admin people sitting here waiting to do work. Like, you know, we can, we can support every single effort and we can hire an event team to, to be up there. And, you know, so um, that 
that is the definition of community, like right there. And two communities giving back in service. I, yeah, Beautiful. You know, it's amazing. It's amazing. So great. <laughs> and and that brings me to like, is is there a way that that men that are are listening to this could go to uh, your charity and support, or where they could get more information about that? Absolutely. So they can go to um, hpfus.org, um, and everything about us is right there. And if they want to make a donation, that's fine. They can just click on the donate tab. If they want to learn more about services, um, it'll be listed there. And as we continue to roll out the details of what Spencer and I are working on together, um, that's going to be posted on there. So when the time comes for people to sign up for a race, um, they can look for information that's going to be posted on there too. So, Great. Awesome. All right. Uh, two, two last questions. I yeah. Two last questions for you. Um, so uh, first one is, what do you believe it means to be a brave heart? Okay. Oh, you want me to answer them? Yeah, okay. you'll answer that, and then I'll ask the next one. <laughs> okay. So I, I think what it, honestly what it means to be as a brave heart is, um, I, I think it's twofold, um, is to live from your heart without the fear of scrutiny. Um, so, and, and if I can use some of the terminology, fear less, um, then that definitely is what that really is all about. Um, and in doing so, um, it's not only just in a way that you live, but it's also in a way that you teach other people to live by giving back in service. Mm. I just got chills from that. So good. So good. <laughs> um, awesome. And then uh, the, the last question I have is, is just what you would, what's the best advice that you have for, for men out there that are, are listening? Um. Well, first of all, let's uh, let's break it down and and ask yourself why are you listening? <laughs> um, be, because there's there's a reason behind that, um, <laughs> and either it's because you know of me and this organization and and you were have been part of it. You just want to kind of like see um, what others are saying, or you've heard about it and you're trying to determine whether you need to be involved. And if you've already done that then the answer is yes, then, then, then you need to, otherwise you would have never done this. Um, and, and I learned that lesson from the person that is asking me these questions right now. So, um, and it's so very true. It's the truth. It, it really yeah. is the truth. Well, I really, I really want to acknowledge you for the courage when we had that conversation because you really just jumped in. It was just like, yeah, it feels right. Yeah, exactly. So, um, and, and it was only two and a half weeks before it was about to take place. So, you know, it was one of those, Michael, you don't need to sell me on the idea because I know I need to be there. Just <laughs> what it cost, you know. Um, so, but it, it really is true when I say if you are, if you're exploring this, there's a reason why you're exploring it. You're just, you just haven't completely heard it from your internal self. So. Mm. Beautiful advice. Love it. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Going clear. Thank you so much, Rhett. You, you are an inspiration, as always, and so thrilled to have you as a part of this community and a friend. Absolutely. Right back at you. And, um, you know, I look forward to talking to you more as things unfold between me and Spencer. It's going to be, it's going to be phenomenal. Like, it's going to be the model for... Oh, I am excited. Yeah, me too. <laughs> no. All right. Peace to you. All right. Bye. Michael. Bye-bye.